module 2.7 set your studio counter so after you have defined your area of responsibility and the ways of working is the point of culture and culture is of course lived in a lot of actions and a lot of processes in everything you do as a studio so it's not something you can define in isolation however i want you to dedicate a part specifically of how do you set the culture as a team lead i would say there's only one way and you are the culture you need to walk the talk so all your behaviors all the things you talk about all the things you do all the things you foster all the things you value all the things you devalue or correct are the culture it is for all your actions and behavior and there's no other way by um, creating it that doesn't go through you and it's something really important to remember so sometimes when we talk about accidental culture it's more an accidental culture that people by looking at you will mimic accidentally rather than doing it on their own will or it could be by accidental culture when you hire without having clarity on the type of values and behaviors you want in your studio so i want to give here examples as a team lead how do i live and embrace the culture i want to foster in your studio through our team values and i have four values that are really important and haven't changed since uh, i would say the past five years since i've been running teams and the first is growth mindset i have talked about it um, when i mentioned about the mentality to have an anti-fragile team and growth mindset is really one key personal value i have even in my own personal life where i think about learning every day everything that i believe yesterday is different tomorrow because i don't know what i don't know and with that mindset i talk a lot about the things we do in the studio that we believe is the correct way of doing but i have no idea if it's the best way or the right way it's what we try so a lot of time even myself as a team lead i say with no um, barrier or problems when i don't fully know because it's true it's really hard and complex to grasp the market and i don't have a better intelligence than uh, of course the rest of the collective intelligence of the planet so it's really important to put ourselves in the team with a growth mindset that we try with what we think we know with our best intention and then we learn and if we did a mistake then we correct and through different examples of how i live this value is really myself admitting the mistakes i have made and sometimes the wrong judgment i have had or even you know in hiring and everything talking often about the things i thought i believe i knew and i didn't know and that makes me want to learn more and be even more open to find out more through the way and experimenting and second important for me is intellectual humility and that is also a very core value for me personal value because i was born in france but i am um, my my parents are immigrants from vietnam they moved in the 80s and i grew up in france as born as a french but educated and having an experience as an immigrant and i know how it feels when you grow in an environment where the norm is different and you because you are different as a minority then you are not listened you are not um, always respected or even you know valued as a human and this is sad to say but this is a reality when in a group you have a certain majority a way of thinking is dominating a minority then this is what happens these differences uh, happen and a big misunderstanding so for me behind intellectual humility is the core value of understanding that we are very different in this world different individuals and the more we travel the more we work with very different people or we just hang out with people from different culture we understand that there is no single truth of who I am as an individual that makes the truth of who others should be. And that means that as when you are intellectually um, humble, is that you accept that differences are not a threat 
and it's just differences. And there are different ways of thinking, but doesn't make it wrong. And actually, it's the opposite. You can learn a lot from people who think differently than you, because then when you think of a problem, this is how you can get the best solution. And that's why for me, I talk often about intellectual humility in the team where it's because somebody disagrees with me, that doesn't mean they are wrong. And often I'm very curious, like, okay, why do you think it's a bad idea? Tell me more about it. What is your perspective? And really showing this as well in the team publicly, how open I am as well to different viewpoints, although they can some, sometimes extreme. There's always a reason behind. Maybe it's a bad way of communicating. Sometimes there's a big misunderstanding and or sometimes there's something at stake really important for a person that creates the conflicts. But in the end, what I want to foster in the team is about really valuing differences and debating when there are differences instead of assuming there's something wrong about the person. My third value then is about team player. A team player is pretty straightforward, is as a team, we want to go for the win, but as a group and not just as a single individual. So the opposite of the concept of team player is having a star that takes it all in the team. So no one is the superstar in the team that can win it all for the rest. And this is really something is important. In the team, every time I talk about what we do in, in the team, the success is the contribution of everyone, even the one who didn't participate directly. Because everyone, it's, it's like a big house. Everyone has a participation and sometimes you see the direct outcome, sometimes indirect. It doesn't matter because even moral support or just Social support is a contribution for anyone in the team. So it's about um, succeeding as a group, which is one of our core values. And at last, player-centric is one of our last values. And here it's also in the really like core of why I'm, I have built the studio. I, I love to play games, but I don't have a personal ambition to make the games of my dream for me. I'm quite happy with the games I play out there and um, I don't have a personal ambition to make a games that I would design just for myself. And it's, a, again, a very noble cause as well if you want to go for that. But in our team, this is our mission is really to design games for a big audience, people who maybe want to have more and haven't experienced it yet. And everyone in our team is very dedicated to that. So I talk a lot about players. I bring the feedback of players to the team. I talk about players. I, I uh, show testimonials or when we make design decisions, I often ask, why do you think it's better? Is it because you think it's better or do you think it's better for the player? So it's brought to the conversation a lot, uh, especially when we have to make design decisions. So everyone in the team is quite aware that this is what we're going for. So to say like all these four values, they're, they only matter if you as a team lead with your core values and the ones we want to foster in the team, ask yourself, are they the ones you yourself are applying to you? Are you embracing them? Are you um, showing them? Are you talking about them when you do certain things in the studio and make hard decisions, for example? And this is how you create a culture. It's by your actions, the things you do or the things you don't do. Um, and the team then can feel this value even without talking about it.